In the introduction of Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Cask of Amontillado, the narrator, Montresor, addresses an unspecified audience who knows his soul well. Montresor explains the many ways Fortunato has injured and insulted him. In the rising action, Montresor vows revenge, though Fortunato thinks they're friends. Montresor recounts how he runs into Fortunato on the street during carnival season. Fortunato is dressed in motley, the traditional costume of a fool or jester, and has been drinking. Montresor tells wine-loving Fortunato that he has a cask of something he thinks is Amontillado, a type of sherry, and wants to bring it to their friend, Lucchese, a wine expert, to taste test it. Fortunato insists he should be the one to test it. Montresor leads Fortunato to his home, empty because the servants have gone to Carnival, and leads Fortunato down into his family catacombs. The two drink and walk, with Montresor imploring Fortunato to turn back and forget about this plan, but Fortunato is insistent on continuing. They walk on, arm in arm, until they reach a dark crypt full of human bones. When Fortunato steps further into the crypt, Montresor chains him to the wall. In the climax of the story, Montresor then begins to break up the opening to the crypt, entombing Fortunato as he cries out, pleads, jokes, then goes silent. In the falling action, Fortunato screams and begs to be released, but Montresor leaves him. In the story's resolution, Montresor recalls that this all happened 50 years ago, and then says in Latin, rest in peace. Gothic fiction often used complicated narrative structures to heighten the suspense in a story. In The Cask of Amontillado, Edgar Allan Poe uses an unreliable, murderous narrator in Montresor, who's rational, calculated, tricky, and cunning, luring Fortunato into his family catacombs. But he's clearly not sane, the paragon of a modern sociopath. The Montresor family motto and coat of arms also foreshadow retribution. The family's Latin motto means, no one insults me with impunity. This entire family takes revenge as its motto, and it illustrates this motto with a coat of arms, which shows a human foot crushing the snake that bit it. Montresor is the foot. Fortunato is the snake who has bitten him. Poe uses several types of irony in the cask of Amontillado. The characters' names create a verbal irony. Fortunato is the Italian version of the Latin name meaning fortunate or blessed. Yet Fortunato is anything but fortunate or blessed. There's situational irony in Fortunato thinking he's going to a public carnival party and wine tasting, but is actually taken to a private crypt to suffer eternally. Fortunato and Montresor can also be read not as separate people, but as doubles or two sides of the same person, a psychology-driven theme Poe loved. The men's names are linked treasure and fortune. Both are wine connoisseurs. Both are similar in speech and banter. Both let loose blood-curdling screams in the end. The final scene can be read through this lens as a dramatization of repression and denial. Montresor is blocking away part of himself. There are four important characters in the cask of Amontillado. The first is the narrator, Montresor. Now, Montresor is a complex and intriguing character whose desire for revenge drives the story. His family motto, translated from Latin, means no one insults me with impunity. Poe seems to suggest that this seething drive is one that defines his existence. He says that Fortunato has insulted and injured him, but he never gives any specifics. Tricking Fortunato and entombing him alive in his family crypt, Montresor is a cold, calculating, relentless narrator. Fortunato first appears in the story wearing a costume, specifically motley, clothes a jester or fool would wear. These two factors largely frame Fortunato's role throughout the story. Readers experience Fortunato through Montresor's narrative, which is clearly biased and likely insane. Fortunato's drunken ego, greed, and competitiveness cloud his judgment. He thinks he's Montresor's friend until it's too late. Lucchese is a wine expert who does not appear in the story in person, but Montresor repeatedly mentions him to Fortunato, pretending he's on his way to see him to ask about the value of the Amontillado he has supposedly found. It's a lie meant to goad Fortunato into descending into his vaults. Montresor's servants act as a singular character who does not appear in the story in person. Montresor does not have a high opinion of their work ethic or honesty. He explicitly ordered them not to leave the house, fully expecting they would leave as soon as his back was turned to join in the carnival festivities.
The Cask of Amontillado is a terrifying short story rife with repeated symbols, including the motley, the vault, the Montresor family coat of arms and motto, and the trowel. When Montresor runs into Fortunato on the street, Fortunato is wearing multicolored motley, the costume of jesters or fools in an old form of Italian theater, complete with a cap with bells on it. Foolish Fortunato will miss clue after clue because of his ego, which leads to his horrifying fate, being entombed alive by his secret enemy. As Montresor guides Fortunato to the vault, where he supposedly is storing the Amontillado, he guides him through a literal palace of death. This is the Montresor family crypt, where members of the family are buried. There's an actual mound of bones in the catacomb. Lured by more wine, Fortunato stumbles into his demise. Given the strong association of wine with Christian communion, this can also be seen as a dark parody of the Christian story of reincarnation. Unlike Jesus, Fortunato does not return from this dark cave alive. The Montresor family has both a coat of arms and a family motto, indicating the family is likely well-established and noble. The coat of arms is a golden foot on a field of blue, crushing a serpent that is biting the heel of the foot. A golden foot underscores the family's self-perception. They are incredibly important, at least to themselves. Crushing the snake indicates how central revenge is to their family. The family's motto in Latin translates to, no one insults me with impunity. Some sources trace the origin of this motto to the Roman emperor, Julius Caesar. And like Caesar, Fortunato's crimes against Montresor remain vague. The trowel, a bricklaying tool, evokes the Masons, a widespread fraternal organization that started as a medieval guild for stonemasons, as the name indicates. It eventually grew into a more general social organization. There's a long history of anti-Masonic suspicion, and many stories have circulated about it being a secret society, even a mystical one. These attitudes grew so strong in 1826 that the anti-Masonic party emerged as a political party in the United States. The paradox here is that Fortunato shows by his hand gesture that he is a member of the organization. But when Montresor shows the trowel, he shows he is, or will at least act like, a literal Mason. Fortunato foolishly reads this as a joke. He misses the clue that he'll be entombed alive. The sinister short story, The Cask of Amontillado, contains a few central themes, namely revenge, folly of pride, and paradox. Acclaimed legend of short gothic fiction, Edgar Allan Poe explicitly signals that revenge will be the focus of The Cask of Amontillado. Montresor fixates on how he plans to enact revenge against Fortunato. Frankly, it seems like Montresor's entire family is obsessed with it, as well, based on their motto and coat of arms that reinforce this theme. Montresor echoes the idea of the dramatic monologue in poetry and the monologues of Shakespeare's plays, where the villain reveals himself to his audience. And his commitment to revenge is powerful and all-consuming. This is a man who keeps track of how other people insult him and how many times. He plans first to deceive Fortunato and then to kill him. Pride is a central motivation in this story, and foolish pride is one of the themes that affects both main characters throughout. Montresor concludes he must have revenge on Fortunato because of his wounded pride. Fortunato may be full of himself and a bit foolish, but nothing in this story suggests any of the thousand injuries he did to Montresor were intentional. They might not even be real offenses. Instead, they might be Montresor placing value on his pride and his family's legacy of being proud so highly that he takes offense even when none is meant or given. Fortunato's foolish pride is central to this story. Dressed for a party, as a fool, notably, and clearly having plans, he abandons them all in a flash as soon as Montresor mentions asking Lucchese about the wine. His outsized pride continues to motivate him throughout the story. Fortunato is clearly sick. He has an absolutely terrible cough. But instead of protecting his health, he insists on going deeper into the catacombs, spurred on by the folly of drinking carelessly. 
The carnival season is a time of paradox when the normal social order is turned upside down. And this can take many forms. In Christian cultures where the church preaches sobriety, carnival is a time of revelry where extravagant excess is allowed. In monarchies, subjects must show respect to the king. But during carnival, disrespect is allowed, even encouraged. Some carnival celebrations crown their own temporary kings, and kings played the role of peasant. By setting the story during carnival, Poe establishes the possibility for this sort of inversion to happen, and it does. A friend turns into a killer, a wine cellar into a tomb, and so on. There are also other paradoxes in this story. It's a paradox that Montresor hates Fortunato, but pretends to be his close friend. Also, Montresor is sure his servants aren't home precisely because he ordered them to stay home. Later on, Fortunato refers to the Masons, who are now only metaphorical stonecutters. But in the story, Montresor is a literal Mason, bricking Fortunato ah, ah, into his family crypt, entombing him alive. Underscoring Edgar Allan Poe's legendary scary story, The Cask of Amontillado, are three central motifs, dampness, masquerade, and wine. The dampness of the dark crypt, a setting typical to Gothic literature, enhances the story's mood and tension, and it also intensifies Fortunato's illness. Montresor repeatedly points out the danger of the dampness to Fortunato, knowing that his ego will cause him to disregard the warnings and compel him onward. Hey, he warned him. The motif of masquerade illuminates a tradition that provides the freedom to abandon reality, invert social norms, and cross boundaries, all of which speak to events in the story. Fortunato's masquerading sees him dressed in carnival attire that reveals his true nature as a fool. And throughout the story, Montresor masquerades as Fortunato's friend in order to draw him into the crypt and expose his true murderous intentions. Because of wine's role in Christian communion, its motif is one strongly associated with life, and red wine in particular is associated with blood. Therefore, in offering the rare Amontillado, Montresor is offering Fortunato a chance at a wonderful life, pretending he's taking the bottle to a mutual friend who's a wine expert in order to identify it. Prideful Fortunato insists on being the one to try it, and that begins him down the path that leads to his own entombment. Wine is both Fortunato's enticement and his downfall.